As the parade of graduates approaches, we salute the states and territories whose sons and daughters will graduate today. Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Georgia, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Maryland, South Carolina, New Hampshire, Virginia, New York, North Carolina, Rhode Island, Vermont, Kentucky, Tennessee, Ohio, Louisiana, Indiana, Mississippi, Illinois, Alabama, Maine, Missouri, Arkansas, Michigan, Florida, Texas, Iowa, Wisconsin, California, Minnesota, Oregon, Kansas, West Virginia, Nevada, Nebraska, Colorado, North Dakota, South Dakota, Montana, Washington, Idaho, Wyoming, Utah, Oklahoma, New Mexico, Arizona, Alaska, Hawaii, District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, Guam, American Samoa, Northern Mariana Islands, U.S. Virgin Islands. State, flags, order, arms, And now, we invite you to join the staff of Recruit Training Command in welcoming the graduating divisions with your applause as they enter Midway Ceremonial Grill Hall and are announced in the following order. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise as we welcome today's graduating divisions.
Divisions. Counter. March. Division commanders, 
left or right face. Parade, rest. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'm Lieutenant Josh Jones, Recruit Training Command's Drill Division Officer. I would like to welcome you to today's passenger review. Today you will see four divisions comprised of 257 sailors participating in their graduation ceremony and soon to join the most powerful Navy in the world. Please draw your attention to the unit position at Senate Day. There is the review commander and staff. The review commander is responsible for conducting the graduation ceremony. Today's review commander is Airman Recruit Jalen Forbes from Dallas, Texas. Let's give him a hand. Performing today is the Triple Threat Unit on their 8th week of training, the State Flags Unit on their ninth week of training, and the Staff Unit on their 10th and final week of training. These units are comprised entirely of recruits. During their night of arrival, recruits are placed into divisions of 88 personnel and assigned division commanders. Recruit division commanders form the backbone of recruit training and are key individuals in the life of every recruit. Division commanders must serve as counselors, disciplinarians, administrators, and military leaders. Above all, they must show themselves as outstanding examples of military bearing, appearance, attitude, and behavior. Each division also has a recruit chief by the officer. This senior recruit supervises the divisional staff positions and leads the division in the absence of their division commanders. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce the graduating divisions, their division commanders, and recruit chief petty officers. As I introduce each division, they will raise the competitive flags that they have earned throughout their training. As I introduce each recruit chief petty officer, the flag representing their home state will also be raised. Please hold your applause until all introductions have been completed. I will be starting from their right. Division one, two, five. Commanded by Chief Petty Officer Thomas Towner. Chief Petty Officer Marissa Moore. Petty Officer Second Class Jacob Wood. And the recruit Chief Petty Officer, Airman Apprentice Abigail Minky from Bangs, Oregon. Division one, two, six. Commanded by Chief Petty Officer Jonathan Reeder. Petty Officer First Class Ryan Little. Petty Officer First Class Deja James. And the recruit Chief Petty Officer, Construction and Apprentice Ashley Harrell from Oakhurst, California. Division one, two, seven. Commanded by Petty Officer First Class, Christopher Reynoso. Petty Officer First Class, Joshua Bauer. Petty Officer First Class, Jonathan Evans. And the recruit chief petty officer, Seaman Johan Suarez from West Palm Beach, Florida. Division 924. Commanded by Chief Petty Officer Ariana Robledo. Petty Officer First Class, Blaine Fur. Petty Officer Second Class, James Manhood. And the recruit chief petty officer, fireman apprentice Daniel Croker from Atlanta, Georgia. On behalf of the commanding officer and staff of Recruit Training Command, we congratulate these division commanders and recruit chief petty officers on a job well done. In a moment, you will see the ceremonial sideboards, boats, and honor guard take their places for arrival honors. This time honor tradition is our formal greeting to this morning's reviewing officer. One such tradition is the gun salute. A gun salute is used to mark an event or to render honors. Today's reviewing officer will receive arrival honors to include a 13 gun salute. 
When requested by the announcer, please stand for the arrival honors, marching on the colors, the national anthem, and the invocation. As a reminder, military guests shall remain covered throughout the entire graduation ceremony. And ladies and gentlemen, one final note. As befitting the importance of this occasion, our ceremony is conducted in a formal manner. However, we do encourage you to participate in today's graduation ceremony by letting your applause show these sailors just how proud that you are. Once again, welcome aboard. Yeah. 
Thank you for inspection coming, sir! The guests may be seated.
Preset. Arf.
What is reporting, sir? Very well. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to your Navy quarter. I'm Captain Ken Frober, Commanding Officer of Recruit Training Command. I'd like to welcome our family and friends attending this recruit graduation today, those watching live and online from around the world. Joining us today is our Navy officer, Major General Calvert J. Worth, Jr., Commanding General, 2nd Marine Corps Division, and our guest of honor, Captain Stephen Yarders, Commanding Officer of Naval Station Great Lakes. I would also like to acknowledge the fantastic support and staff from the uh, fleet sponsors the 2nd Marine Division, 1st Class Petty Officer Association, sponsoring Division 125, 2nd Marine Division, Chief Petty Officers, sponsoring Division 126. Our fleet sponsor program allows recruits to connect with sailors and Navy and Marine commands from around the world for valuable mentoring and motivation while here at Recruit Training Command. This weekend also marks our Memorial Day weekend. Uh, and for those of you who might not be uh, quite aware, Memorial Day found its origins after the American Civil War, 1866 and 1868, when the nation found a need to come together and recognize the sacrifice of a, of a generation towards making a better tomorrow. As this matured to time after World War I, it was formally adopted as a federal holiday later under uh, President Johnson and is what we know today. It is a time for us to recognize the sacrifice and the spirit of service that we in uniform continue on today, remembering to make each day a little bit better. So I'd just like to take a moment of silence to think about that and remember that. I would also like to welcome all our veterans here today. Thank you for your dedicated service to our nation. Would all our veterans please rise and give you a round of applause. Thank you for your service to our wonderful country. Division 924 graduates today. There are staff support unit providing arrival honors, honor guard, recruit, review, commander, adjutant, support staff, and ceremony. Please join me in giving now three other outstanding divisions before you here now. A round of applause for their preparation performance to this day. The staff of Recruit Training Command is committed to providing the United States Navy with basic to train, physically fit, and smart and disciplined sailors, such as those standing before you here today. These sailors have successfully completed 10 rigorous weeks of training and have earned the right to wear the uniform recognized around the world as a symbol of freedom. I would also like to take a moment to introduce you, their family, and friends to your new Navy family. As you reconnect with your sailors shortly, and navigate your new journey together. We invite you to learn more about your Navy family resources here at Great Lakes and around the world. Search the internet for Navy Boot Camp Navy Family. Check out our website for more information to learn about your new Navy family. Today's graduates will serve as the bedrock of American Naval Forces and Marine Naval Forces around the world. And I can say with pride, this training group is ready to graduate. Ladies and gentlemen, we I present to you 257 of the newest and sharpest sailors in the United States Navy. applications, and physical fitness. These flags are carried as a visible symbol of the division's success. Each flag indicates that your sailors individually and as teams met performance standards in one or more mission area events. 
A division that exceeds basic requirements in these areas during their training qualifies as a battle efficiency division and is awarded the battle flag in recognition of their performance. Division 1, 2, 7 hazards on its own. Major General Ward will now present this week's individual awards, and he'll be joined on the drill deck by our commanding officer, Captain Forward, and our guest of honor, Captain Yarton. It is our pleasure to recognize the review commander for today's ceremony, Airman Recruit Jalen Forbes, Division 924, from Dallas, Texas. Throughout his training, Airman Recruit Forbes has exhibited great pride in naval service and has consistently demonstrated his potential as an effective leader. He has maintained a high standard of personal appearance and displayed excellent military bearing and command voice. Congratulations on your outstanding achievement. Well done, sailor. Thank you, General. Good morning, Captain. Good morning. Good job, well done. Thank you, Captain. Good morning, Captain. Instruction of President Harold. Reporting. Instruction of President Harold. For achieving the highest overall academic score during recruit training, construction with apprentice Ashley Farrell, Division 126 from Oakhurst, California, has earned the Academic Excellence Award, which is sponsored by the Fort Dearborn chapter of the Illinois Society of the Sons of American Revolution. Construction with apprentice Harold receives a letter of accommodation from the commanding officer. Well done, Sailor. For having displayed extraordinary qualities best expressing the American spirit of honor, initiative, and loyalty, Airman Apprentice Ray Cuban, Division 127, from Atlanta, Georgia, is awarded the Navy League Award, which is sponsored by the Navy League of the United States. Airman Apprentice Cuban is presented with a commemorative plaque and a letter of commendation from the commanding officer. Well done, sailor. Thank you, General. Good morning, Captain. Good morning. Thank you, Captain. Good morning, General. Eminent Prince Pachano, reporting. Aaron Prentice Nicholas Pichardo, Division 127, from Queens, New York, is the winner of the United Service Organization Award for Best Exemplifying the Spirit and the Tent of the Word Shipping. Aaron Apprentice Pichardo has given a commemorative plaque from the United Service Organization. Well done, Sailor. Thank you, General. Good morning, Captain. Good morning. Thank you, Captain. 
Monica Seaman Ballard reporting. Seaman Job Ballard, Division 127 from Cyprus, Texas, is the recipient of the Military Order of the World Wars Award of Merit. This award is presented for meritorious performance during recruit training. Seaman Ballard is presented with a commemorative plaque from the Military Order of the World Wars. Well done, Sailor. Thank you, General. Good morning, Captain. Good morning. Thank you, Captain. Good morning, Captain. Aaron Prentice Meeky reporting. The Military Officers Association Leadership Award is presented to Emory Prentice Abigail Minky, Division 125, from Banks, Oregon, for demonstrating exceptional tenacity and professionalism. Emory Prentice Minky is rewarded a letter of commendation from our commanding officer. Well done, sailor. It is appropriate to recognize such outstanding individual accomplishments by these sailors with a round of three cheers. The adjutant will lead all graduating divisions in three cheers for this morning's award winners. Marine Air Ground Task Force Crisis Response Africa, 
Above Major General Morris from the Bill and Simons, he has served as Commanding Officer of Recruit Station in Detroit, and duty as Director of the U.S. Marine Corps and Enlisted Professional Military Education. During his joint service assignments, he has served as a Military Assistant, Department of Defense, Executive Secretary, and Office of Secretary of Defense, Marine Military Assistant to the Under Secretary of the Navy, and most recently as the Director of Strategy and Policy and Plans in the U.S. Southern Command. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a warm recruit training command. Welcome to Major General Morris. Well, good morning. Uh, it is truly an honor for me to be here today. And Captain Proberger has already answered the question as to why a Marine officer, Marine General Officer, stands before you. Our histories are inextricably linked, and they are, the relationship is 249 years old. The Marine Corps has worked with the Navy as one of the naval services, worked with the Navy for those 249 years to patrol the global commons, to respond to crisis and contingency, and to be most ready as an expeditionary force when the nation needs us most. I'm here today to emphasize the importance of our naval services and the relationship that exists between both the Navy and the Marine Corps. Months ago, the individuals standing before you raised their hands and took the oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Today, they recited the Sailor's Creed and now they wear the Dixie Cup, the symbol of our Navy that is known around the world. There's no way for us to know specifically what your future holds. But I'll use 33 years of experience to maybe provide you with a glimpse. You've chosen to travel the road less traveled and serve your country, prepared to go where needed when called. And if you stay long enough, you truly will see the world. You'll travel to the South Pacific where legendary battles will fall. You'll travel the Atlantic and the Mediterranean seas. You'll travel and see countries far and wide. You've chosen to sacrifice your individualism to become a member of a team. And at battle stations, you learn how to operate as a team to get the work done under the most dire circumstances. Mission comes first, and personal preferences are set aside. And once you leave service, as many of our veterans in the audience have, You'll spend the rest of your life searching for a similar bond and purpose. You volunteered to go into harm's way when needed to undertake the most difficult task, again, under the most arduous circumstances. You're now officially part of the most powerful Navy on the planet. Over the course of the last 33 years, I've spent time training and operating for deployed aboard Naval vessels, working alongside our Navy brothers and sisters. There's nothing, absolutely nothing, like being a member of a Navy Marine Corps team. The National Security Act of 1947 states that the Navy shall be organized, trained, and equipped primarily for prompt and sustained combat incident to operations at sea. For the Marine Corps, we've been tasked to provide fleet Marine forces of combined arms together with supporting air components for service with the fleet in the seizure and defense of advanced naval bases. The Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Lisa Franchetti, together with the Commandant of the Marine Corps, Eric Smith, has challenged sailors and marine, Marines around the globe to embrace our mission as the Navy's Expeditionary Force in readiness. The CNO reminds sailors, quote, that we are the United States Navy, the most powerful Navy in the world, and that we are sailors and civilians who have answered our nation's call to service. We are Americans who embody our nation's call and embody the character, competence, and dedication to our mission. Our identity is forged by the sea, and we are here to preserve peace, respond to crisis, and win decisively in war. We operate far forward, around the world, and around the clock. 
The Commandant has published his guidance and reminds his remains that first and foremost, we are a war-fighting organization. We exist to fight and win our country's battles, and everything we do should center around that goal. We will continue to provide our nation with a world-class expeditionary force. Deployed forward to campaign closely alongside our Navy shipmates, deliberately campaigning both at sea and ashore. My message to all of the veterans in our audience today, first and foremost, thank you. But worry not. Sleep well at night. They do, in fact, make them like they used to. Over the last 10 weeks, these men and women before you have been transformed. My conversation last night with several around the dining hall convinces me of something that I know and believe. They are smart, they're disciplined, physically fit, now basically trained sailors, ready for the follow-on training at their A schools and service to the fleet beyond that. They are truly ready for any challenge from any adversary anywhere on the globe. The threats to our nation and our interests are real and growing. The technology advances quickly, innovation is required, and these young Americans who have raised their hand to serve alongside of their fellow Marine brothers and sisters are ready for any challenge. They'll be trained in their specific operational specialties, where they be boatswain's mates, machinists, corpsmen, aviation mechanics, or other. They'll be ready for any task. They're committed to do so under the most arduous circumstances. As you go forward, sailors, I simply ask a couple things. First and foremost, that you maintain a warfighting mindset. For everything that you do, from wherever you serve and whatever role, contributes to our ability to fight and win the nation's battles. Understand the broader mission and your specific roles within it. And finally, most importantly, Take care of the members of your team. You're special. You're special. You're truly one of that 1%, less than 1% that has decided to serve their country, again, under the most arduous circumstances. As you graduate today, I wish you God's peace. And I hope that you maintain the enthusiasm that you feel right now. And as you go forward in the weeks ahead, that you'll make the Navy exactly what you dreamed it should be. The next Michael Murphy, the next Carl Brashear, the next Forrest Gall, Spruance, the Knicks, are all standing amongst you today. The next CNO, the next Master Chief Petty Officer of the Navy, stands in your ranks. So finally, as you graduate today, I understand I'm the last thing between you and your families. Keep your heads up. Know that you've made the right decision to serve your nation. Know that those of us who have spent our lives committed to service to this nation are also committed to your success. Again, keep your heads up. Always tap into the win and remain Semper Fidelis. Congratulations. Salute of the graduating divisions, and he will be joined on the drill deck by our commanding officer, Captain Probert. 
Please remain seated until your graduates have been placed on liberty. Please join me in one more round of appreciation for our wonderful musicians of Navy Band, Great Lakes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if your sailor is reporting to Naval Station Great Lakes for follow-on training, you will experience some waiting as your sailor checks in. As you wait, the National Museum of the American Sailor welcomes your visit. It is conveniently located just past the main gate of Naval Station Great Lakes with plenty of parking, free admission, and helpful and friendly staff. Flats, post, section leaders fall out and retrieve outer garments.
Ladies and gentlemen, today is the only day for access to the Navy Exchange and photo pickup. Today and tomorrow, you can pick up your sailor at the Yorktown parking garage. Sailors going on liberty without a vehicle are to exit gate 8 towards the train station parking lot. Thanks again to each and every one of you for joining us on this most memorable of Navy days. And without further delay, now hear this, Liberty Call!